Is it a cool day? Or is it more like a water cool day? Hmm. Yeah, today is a cool day because I'm a very, very, very lucky man. I've got good friends and I've got a nice, very nice team in the VZBot team. And you probably know Rack already. If you don't, then he's part of the VZBot team. And today he's gifted me with a couple parts that he self-milled on his own CNC machine. And they are just awesome. Let me start by showing you this guy here. Look at that thing. Totally useless to mill such a part, but totally cool. This is so awesome. This is the fan guard that goes for the exhaust fan on the VZ330. And it's just awesome. Thank you so much for this one. But it's not all. It's a cool day because we're going to water cool the motors on one of my printers. Is it going to be the 330, the 235? I think I'm going to do the 235. But yeah, let me show you that. You probably saw that on my social media because I posted a couple pictures of that. Look at this thing. Come on, little focus on this one. Yeah, look at that. This is going to be cooling the motors and I have eight of them. Well, I have four. I'm missing a couple parts to do eight, but I'm going to do four of them so the um, they have been milled in aluminum and they're gonna go on I, I think it's gonna be the VZ uh, 235 because uh, yeah that's the printer I like to go crazy and if you're gonna ask is it really needed for me on this particular setup I, I don't think it's needed honestly the the motors are well capable of, of going uh, of printing with, with even high temperature, but some of you are running a, um, a heated chamber that goes way above mine. Mine stays maximum 45 degrees Celsius. If it goes higher, I kick the exhaust fan and it stays at 45 degrees. I don't want to go any higher. It's perfect for what I do here. But I have an issue where when I do stupid things, and you know I like doing stupid things, when I push those motors to their limits, for instance, when I do like 2,000 millimeters per second up to, let's say, 3,000 millimeters per second, they tend to shut down and they tend to lose their power and I have to let them cool down. I have to do like two, three print, um, print tests with them, then they completely lose their power and I have to let them cool and start over again. This water cooling system will allow me to not wait for them, just keep them cool and ready and not lose any power because heat is, is, is affecting them. So is it needed? No. Is it cool to have? Yeah, yeah, I think it's cool. It's very cool. Um, useless for probably most of people. Useless for me as well, but yeah. I have water cooling already on, on the Goliath, so why not use the same water cool system and water cool everything? So I'm going to start today and install that. It's not going to be a final installation because I'm also waiting on some coolers for the TMC 5160s. I want to water cool those suckers as well. So everything's going to be water cool. Why? Why not? <laughs> I mean, we have water cool in the machine, so why not just uh, use it? So let's jump right into it and see how we're going to be able to, to, to route those, those cables. It's not going to be a very professional installation for now. Or maybe never, I don't really care. But yeah, let's install them and see how that works. We're gonna compare them with and without the water cooling and see how it affects motors. So these are the parts that we're gonna to use tonight to install them. Um, yeah, I have pre-installed some of them already with, uh, with, with fittings. I have uh, straight fittings, straight out or 90 degree. I have them also in, in uh, plastic. And, and brass, uh, nickel plated. Um, I have hardware, I have gaskets, I have PU tubes that we're gonna use, polyurethane tubes, and uh, that's, that's about it. Let's take a look at the current setup. We have water cooling 
on the hot end and it's uh, going into that top mount radiator with that fan so this is where the cooling happens and the pump is mounted in the back of the printer and it's mounted directly to the concrete wall. I did that because that pump is a, a little um, noisy, it vib vibrates a bit and if I mount it on the printer it's just a, a bit annoying and uh, that way it's very uh, and I can lift it up if I need to move the printer I just oops I just lift it up put it on the table like that and then I can move the printer and I've installed uh, valves a bit everywhere so that way if I work on the printer I can shut down any part of the the loop and then I can easily work on the printer and that's about it so let me just move the printer from the corner so we can access the back and everything and start working on it. So the installation on the motors is pretty straightforward. Here we have a LDO Speedy and uh, we're going to remove two of those uh, screws that hold the motor together. We're not going to remove all four, only two. We're going to place the cooler on it like so. And uh, we're going to use 50 millimeters to replace those two screws that we have removed. So on, on this, there are um, four mountings. Two of them are straight through. And the other two here are for a little M3 that's going to hold the two plates together. So the plates are, hold to, are held sorry, together with those two. And then these are holding to the motors so everything will sandwich together it's a lot easier to do it that way it's a cool it's a cool id from rack that way um if you have to work on it and separate it from the motor <laughs> there's not going to be a mess of coolant this will stay together with those two screws and it's going to be a lot easier to work on the printer that way so let me install all four on every corners and then uh we go to the next step Ta-da! We're done! <laughs> All corners are done and look at that! It looks so good. I love it so much. It's beautiful! And it's done on four corners. So we are ready to run the tubings inside and then we can play with it. Alrighty, all valves are shut down and now we're gonna open up that rear panel. All right, back at the back of the printer, I have changed my mind. Before we run the tubings to the motors, I will run two loops instead of one, uh, just because that will allow me to completely shut down the cooling to motors. That way I can compare with cooling and without cooling. So that's gonna be uh, good for my, uh, my future test with that. So the way I'm gonna do that, I have installed these two valves here. Uh, one's going to be for, this is going to be the return line from uh, the motors. So I'll be able to adjust the flow using these little guys. And this is going to be the return line uh, from the hot end. And then from the radiator, we're going uh, down back to the water pump or the water reservoir. So from the water reservoir, I've installed this T fitting here. So one goes to the hot end, the other one will go to the motors and then both will be coming back to radiator and just back to the tank. So let's install the tubings to the motors. We're gonna enter the printer. There's a little 
hole right behind here. I'm going to just um, remove this so you're going to be able to see. But I don't know if you see that. There's a, this is where the cables get in the printer. So I'm going to use that hole to route the two wings. Here we go. The tubings are all installed and hopefully we don't have any leak, but just to give you a quick rundown of what I did, um, the tubing comes out, I mean comes inside the printer and it's going to feed this motor. Then we're going to follow this to the other motor at the back and we're going in front using that tube and we're going down inside here and we're coming back up here on this motor. And we're going down again at the bottom of the printer and we're coming out in the back. Once it comes out of the back through this line, it goes all the way up to here, to this guy. So I'll be able to close this valve to completely shut down uh, coolant going to the motors and this is going to the hot end. This is the hot end loop and then everything comes back to the tank here and the tank will be mounted on the wall. We got coolant in the tank. Now we need to fill up the system and uh, bleed the air out. I'm just gonna shut down the loop that goes to the motor first. I wanna test out all here if there's no leak. So let me start the pump real quick and hopefully no leak. I'm just going to do this. So here we go. It is pumping. So far so good. Let me remove the cap so air can come out. And there, the issue is that I had this valve <laughs> closed. So there we go. All right. Now it's circulating. All right. Bleeding the air out. Let's give it a moment to completely bleed the system. <laughs> there we go. We got coolant circulating in the system. And uh, good news is there is no absolutely no leak anywhere. I was a bit afraid of uh, having a leak somewhere be between like plates on the stepper motors or any fittings but no there's no link at all so right now we have the only loop running right now is the hot end loop and uh, i didn't fill the coolant all the way up to here because i wanted to have coolant below the return line here so you could see bubbles and see how much flow we get out of there and this is hot end only now if i open up the valve for stepper motor loop let me do that real quick all right <laughs> this is the crazy flow that we get with boat loops um now let me just shut down the loop for hot end and show you only the stepper motor loop of course it's going to flow a bit less than hot end because it's a longer loop it goes through more fittings and more more stuff but this is the flow that we get just for the motors and I'm trying to show you bubbles here but um, I think it's it's just enough flow that it's gonna do its job properly uh, is it yeah we can see that on the camera so that is the loop for motors only let me now open up the hot end loop again and you're gonna see the flow will about to be doubled so I think to equalize the flow in boat loop, I'm going to have to close down the hot end loop just a tiny bit about, about right, I would say right here. I still need to install maybe flow meters to compare boat loop or maybe do a little trick like my buddy Rack suggested me that unplug the return line, run five minutes, uh, sorry, five seconds of, of flow on boat loops and compare how many, how much volume of liquid we got but just by guessing and by my rough guesstimate with what i see this would be about right where i would run boat loop so we we got ready we're ready to do some testing and see how these coolers will will work 
All right, we are doing the test in a fully enclosed uh, VZ235 and uh, we're printing with ASA. Um, enclosure right now is at 43 uh, Celsius and I've set up my, uh, my thermal camera and it's pointing at that motor right here in the front. This motor is the third one in the loop and uh, I've set the motors at 2.3 amp each so they can get a bit of, uh, of heat to generate heat. And currently the thermal camera is showing 40, uh, sorry, 53, 53.6, 53.5. And uh, it's been, uh, it's still going up. Yeah, 53.7. It's probably gonna reach, uh, around 60 because we're not doing super crazy speed right now it's just to demonstrate or to test if the coolant is gonna affect the motor so there's no coolant circulating i'm gonna turn on the coolant right now and i'm filming where i've reached 54 degrees celsius on the motors um, and it's still climbing 54.2 but um just to save us time i'm gonna open up the loop now for the water cooling and we're going to be able to see, oh, let me record. Yeah, record that thermal camera. All right, it is recording. We are at 54.6 and it's climbing. Opening up coolant now. Let's see if it's going to drop. All right, we are circulating coolant now. And uh, yeah, it's dropping very quickly. We're down to 51, still dropping, 49, <laughs> which is cool. I, uh, I'm happy with that. It's dropping, so it's a good thing. It's cooling. We're down to 47 Celsius. So I'm going to let it go for about a couple minutes and see where we're going to go down. It's probably not going to go any lower than 40, my guess is, uh, because enclosure is at 44. Uh, coolant is circulating and it's cooling, but uh, the room temperature here is 23. So um, I, I think 40 is going to average at 40. That's a rough estimate. If it goes uh, lower than that, that's fine. But uh, from my, my, my previous test with my Goliath water cool, that was about where it was uh, aiming down. So 45. So it has, it, it has lost 10 degrees Celsius in a couple minutes, which tells me it is working. Very good. I'm happy with that. So let, let's keep filming on this one and I'll talk to you in a couple minutes. All right, we are a couple minutes later and uh, it will not go any, um, hold on, focus please, there you go, 44.5 is the lowest right now, between 44.5 and 45 is where it's averaging, so um, I'm going to have to do more tests because I don't know, I didn't measure before. Um, those motors are relatively new, but before with the speedies uh, at 2.3 amp, they were cooking and I couldn't leave my hand on the motor. It was just way too hot, it was burning. But now, if I open this up and I touch the motor, they are warm. <laughs> That's cool. They are not hot burning, they are warm. So it, it cools them down pretty good. Um, I'm going to have to do more tests without coolant and see at crazy speed uh, how it's, it's going to affect them. But so far, I think I'm, I'm happy with that. It cools down and it does its job and that's all I wanted. So 44 degrees Celsius, 45 degrees Celsius average is a very decent um, temperature for running those motors and they don't get any hotter. So Vez is happy. So more tests I'm going to do later. But for now, um, it's been a long enough video, I think. So I'm going to close that. I mean, I'm going to leave that print finished, of course. But uh, I'll do more testing and I'm going to let you guys know on my social media how I like or how I, I think those cooling plates are performing. And if you are interested in those, um, yeah, just let me down in the comment below. So. That was it for the testing. It works!
It was a, a very cool project. I really enjoyed making that video. Sorry, it was um, a bit long again. I, 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 just, I just speak too much, I think. It's, that's the issue with me. I just speak too much. So apologize for that. But if you are interested in those uh, motor cooler, because I think they were good. I'm happy with the result. I'm happy they, they are cooling the, the motors um, good enough that I think they're going to be good. Um, it could be better. These are the prototypes. It could have more flow. I'm using uh, those connectors that they're not best. So I think uh, if we use something like um, uh, the plastic one flows better than the metal one, that the hole inside is bigger. We could even do uh, PC6 M6 because the hole is M6. So we can screw on uh, M6 PC6 for a six millimeter hose or, or tubing which would flow more but I tried to keep everything four millimeters so everything is the same in the system I think it runs good like that so if you are interested in in those let us know if we have a lot of interest or enough people that will like to uh, buy them we could manufacture them work with mellow on this and uh, it, it's gonna be cheap I'm telling you we we well we I say we rack design them to be easily machinable and cheap to machine so um let me know down in the comment below if you if you'd like a pair or a set of four um more people that want it the better the price will be that's how it works with machining so um that was it so thank you very much for watching thank you for making it up to the end uh it was a pleasure for me to make this one i had fun i hope you enjoyed it so on this i wish you all a good night and we'll see you soon on another video and this time i'll try to make it smaller shorter i just speak too much that's that's my issue have a good night folks bye